Welcome to my channel, Shavers and Shavettes. I hope you're all well. Today we're going to have a look at one of my favorite junk shops to find my shave gear. So if you don't call it a junk shop, maybe this type of place will look familiar to you and hopefully you'll have some luck there. Let's go ahead and get inside. So as we take a look around inside, I have to apologize for the video quality. I asked if it was okay if I did a little recording and they actually asked me not to this time. I've done it before. I don't know why I couldn't today, but so instead of being nice and actually doing what they ask, I just had to be a little sneaky about it. Taking a look around, we see some pretty usual stuff. A lot of old books, picture frames, old posters on the wall, and we got, hey, what? A rocket fuel tank. I've never seen one of those in the junk shop before. You know, $15 seems very reasonable, and I was tempted, but uh, I've got a kid to think about, so yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next section. Another very common thing to see in shops like this is all kinds of kitchenware. So we've got a bunch of glass stuff, tin kitchenware is very popular here, and right above the kitchenware, we see our first razor siding. And, and why wouldn't we? It's uh, perfectly natural. I keep my razors in the kitchen, don't you? Next up, we walk over to our sort of metal crafty section. I don't know why every shop needs a little metal crafty section. I guess that's the only place that the men's shop is if it's made out of metal. And walking over here, a Pepsi Santa Claus. I can't say I remember a Pepsi Santa Claus before. It's usually the Coca-Cola Santa Claus, but uh, there he is. And now we do have the Coca-Cola section complete with Coca-Cola Santa Claus. I don't think there's a junk shop in the Midwest that doesn't have a giant Coca-Cola section, and uh, this shop, that's just one that they have. Another sh section that every shop needs to have is the record section. We've got our rock and roll collection here. We've got some posters on the wall. Looks like we've got Rolling Stones, Elvis. There's a Madonna record if anybody's been looking for that. In this shop, we go straight from rock to country and western, and those are, uh, yeah, those are the two genres you have. Pressing onwards, we have some sporting supplies, some jerseys, we've got some gigantic shoes next to baby shoes, and of course, your violin, you gotta have that. And now we have our second razor siding, the very rare upside down base plate. And you know why these things are everywhere? Why are they always listed as being so rare? And another thing that is frequent to junk shops are the Precious Moments figurines. This, uh, I live in an area that is extremely religious. A lot of very religious people collect those, and then uh, I guess they feel like it's their duty to sell them in the junk shop when they're no longer wanted. We've got a nice big wall of different liquor bottles and beer steins, all kind of neat stuff there. That's kind of the neat thing about these types of shops is you never know exactly what you're going to see in a shop like this. Nice old record player. I think I saw some magazines back here in the corner. Magazines are really good for finding old shave ads. And I think we'll take a look here, see if we can find some neat old shave ads. Uh, yeah, I'll... I'll, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll just thumb through these off camera. I'll let you know if I find anything good. Well, I'm just going to move on to the next section here. We've got some chicken wire holding back some dangerous figurines. And there we go. That's what I'm talking about here. We've got some more razors inside a little cabinet made of chicken wire. And moving around to the next section, I actually found a pretty big stash of razors as we look through this glass cabinet. Um, there's some on the top shelf there, some on the bottom shelf. This was pretty impressive to see, although somebody thought they were quite a collector because they were priced well above what I wanted to pay. And for our last little clip, we've got a nice, enormous knife. I always recommend to spin around any display that spins. Make sure you're looking at all of the sides. This one has three sides, nothing fancy in there. But we're going to wrap up with a pretty interesting little razor caddy. The top flips down to capture the razor. Down below that, there is a neat little blade bank. Got a little hook for your brush. Very cool, but again, a lot more expensive than I'm willing to pay. So there you have it. A little visit to my favorite shop. 
I saw a lot of things, and I actually did decide to take home a handful of things. And to round out the video, let me switch over to my camera, and we'll take a look at what I got. All right, so I'm back home. Time to take a look and see what I decided to bring home. Before I do that though, just to let you know, this was an extremely lucky day at the junk shop. I might go there 20 times before finding even one razor I want to bring home with me. And a lot of times when I talk about finding razors out in the junk shops or antique malls, people say, Andy, I went to a store like that one time and I didn't find anything. And my only answer is, yeah, I believe it. I've been to that same store a hundred times and didn't find anything. It doesn't mean you stop looking, you just come back a later time and see if anybody brought anything in that they're wanting to sell. Today there was actually a lot of razors that I left in the store as well, but did decide some should come home with me. So let's take a look at what we got. First up, can't go wrong with a nice Micromatic. This guy needs a little bit of cleanup, but he'll clean up nice. $2.75. Got a super speed in pretty nice condition. Seller cleaned this one up before selling it. That's why it costs a little more. $5. We've got a nice blue tip super speed. This one comes in at 375. It's a little sticky. I think it'll clean up just fine though, getting all those old hard water deposits and such off of there. Got a really dirty caked on grime super speed here, but this one I'll show in a future video of how I clean up razors after I get them. $3. Can't go wrong with another Micromatic. Again, you just you rarely find these in terrible condition. Some are in better than others, of course, but they're never super bad. $5 on that one. Got another nice gem. This one's the heavy flat top. Another razor that just, man, you'd never see them in terrible condition. They're always looking really good. This one is a little more than I generally spend. 975 but I actually don't have a case for the heavy flat top I just have the razors so I'm okay to buy that got a case for them and then the last one another case razor this case is in really rough condition we've got a nice Sheridan this one's got eh, quite a bit of cleanup that needs to be done got some uh, Kind of some corrosion on the inside, but that'll clean up very nicely. I think it'll look really good once it's cleaned up. But this guy, razor and case, $12.50. So there we have it. That's what I decided to bring home with me today. Um, again, this is an unusual day that I found so much. I'm a little disappointed I didn't find any soap. I was really hoping to add to the Trash to Lather series today, but that's the way it goes. You, you might go a couple months in a row before finding even one razor that you decide needs to go home with you. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little behind the scenes look at the type of place that I like to do my shave gear shopping. Yeah, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.